Good morning guys, my name is Trevor. Welcome back to the Arctic Vet YouTube channel. I know we've been gone for quite a while. It's been a hot minute. It's time to download y'all with what's been going on. Roll that intro. so to start off Jeep's doing good trailer still full not really it's getting emptier Corvette still doing great like hundred and ninety three thousand miles on that old girl now and the Nissan still killing it getting that great gas mileage you know yep that's all worth it <laughs> our dogs are definitely the most spoiled dogs in the world probably because they have an air conditioner They've got a little window unit that blows nice cool air right into their doghouse for them. And we happen to be spoiled too with, with our house. It's, it's pretty amazing. There are a lot of things to be thankful for. And the most important thing that I am thankful for is Jesus Christ. Like, God sent him, his only son, here to earth. Ah, God is man, in man as Jesus to pay for all of our sins, to pay the price, to clear our debt, clear all of it, clear all of our debt, everything, all of our sin. We're born into sin, it's, we're humans, we're not perfect. Jesus was the only perfect one. And I, I, our family, we're devoted followers, fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. No religion, we're not, we're not bound by those chains of religion. We're not tied, down by them we're not held back by them man it's all about jesus it's all about jesus and i invite you guys to check out some of the videos that i've shared from our church some of the ser sermons that we we have attended been to heard watched you guys can stream them every sunday they've got two 9 a.m and 11 a.m that's central standard time check them out anyhow today what I really want to talk about is not only Jesus, but about how we witnessed somebody go on the journey to heaven. It was incredible. The garage is slowly getting cleaned out. It's pretty awesome. I'm excited about that. I'm really excited about that, guys. Because then I can empty this trailer kind of into the garage and we can get that back to my dad and have a little more parking and then we can actually try and do something here with the whole parking situation. But for now, I'm gonna sit down and tell you guys this story about how Jessica and I, my mom, Papa, friends, family, my brother, how we all got to witness our Omi, which is how we, as kids, that's how we said Oma, which is German for grandma. So our grandmother, she passed away last week. I can't even believe it's already been a week. It sure doesn't feel like it. Anyhow. It wasn't even, that wasn't even the hardest part about her passing. But I gotta take you guys back uh, like a year or so ago. So, my Omi and I used to be really, really close. I mean, I worked down the road from where she lived. I used to live down the road from where she lived. And I, we would, uh, when I was working there by her, at lunchtime, I'd call her up and be like, hey, what are you doing? Let's go get some lunch. And we'd go get some lunch. <laughs> it's the greatest thing ever because most of the time, not sponsored, we used to go to Spangles because they got the American deal where you could get a burger, fries, a drink, and an ice cream sundae. That's like the best kind of lunch you could get. And it was only $5, so it was super cheap, and it was totally worth it, not healthy, and I can't eat it anymore. And I wouldn't go get it anymore. <laughs> because one, there's a lot of dairy involved in that, and I can't have dairy. So anyways, we that's what we used to do. We used to go and do that stuff, and 
And then we go uh, do other things too, like outside of lunch, and the kids go over there and all that. And man, it it was it was good. It was really good. And then dementia. If you guys don't know, dementia started taking over, which in other countries they just call dementia diabetes. And Omi, that's that's what started kicking in. And there are dementia patients who are very, very sweet. Our grandpa Larry, who ju just recently passed too, he was he had dementia, and he was he was so sweet. He was such a loving, a loving, like caring dementia per person with dementia. Omi, on the other hand, she she was flip floppy. She she battled it very, very hard. Some days she was very loving, and other days she was just flat out. You didn't want to be around. She was rude. And so we had we had a few bad encounters, and the kids were around and witnessed them. So Jessica and I, as the parents, were like, hey, we, we can't do this. We can't, I, I can't have the kids, like, involved in that. Because that's not good for them, that's not good for us, that's not good for Omi. And it wasn't good for my mom. So my mom steps in, which she's been there the whole time, right? She's been helping take care of things, and we've been back and forth, like we're on the good side of Omi, and she's on the bad side of Omi, and then she's on the good side, and I'm on the bad side of Omi. <laughs> it was like literally a hot potato that mom and I just kept passing back and forth. <laughs> So mom and I kept we we kept everything like, hey, this is what I said, this is what's going on. <laughs> that way we're on the same page and we all we both know what's really going on. <laughs> it, it's funny. It really it's funny and it was it was difficult in the moment of like going through it and but now it's it's just something to look back and laugh about. It it really it was. And dementia's not it's not great. There's not I don't know of a way to cure it or help it or aid it. I, I don't know. I really, I just don't know. But with other countries looking at it as diabetes, that makes me believe that there is a way, that there is something that you could do, whether it's changing the diet a ton or hopefully not having to have medications, but maybe like supplements, vitamins. I'm all about the all natural stuff. And I'm not, I'm not for the doctor prescribed medicines. Like I, no, that stuff made me so sick that I, I just don't want anything to ever do with it ever again. Yeah, that's me, that's, that's my thing. I would much rather have something that came from the earth because what comes from the earth came from God. God put all the seeds that we need for everything. He provided it all. He provides everything for us. Everything. And I literally mean everything. It's amazing. God is so good. And that's where we get to go with, with this journey today is we get to see God and we get the testimony that, that I, I have of watching Omi she, she battled her way to heaven, and it's not really like she was fighting. She was afraid. She was scared. She didn't want to go. And it's so incredible because for a year we didn't talk to her. And I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I'm sorry. I, I know this is going to be hard, but we can't have anything to do with her. So <clears throat> then the our kids, they all were like, well, we miss Omi and we want to see Omi. And so we have a whole nother subject on that. Anyhow, we decided, okay, if you guys want to go see her, Gammy will take you, which Gammy is my mom. So that's their, that's their, the kids' is grandma. They call her Gammy. It's so sweet. It's amazing. And, <laughs> and so she takes them and they have a great time. They have an amazing time. So anyhow, we fast forward to last week. My phone, ugh, like the worst time to update, right? My phone updates, and so it's completely off. It's not on at all. I didn't know it was going to update. I didn't even pay attention to it. Well, about 6 o'clock, Jessica's already up. She's getting ready for work. 6.30ish, she gets a call from my mom and answers and like, Hello, what's going on? Mom says, 
can you wake Trevor up? Like, we need Trevor now. Omi's in the hospital. And they give her hours to days to live. So she wakes me up. I find out, blah, blah. I get my phone going. And I had three missed calls for my mom. And I was like, oh, dang it. <laughs> Not the time for my phone to do this to me. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, we... Lily is the only one at home right in, in, in this moment. She's the only one that's home. Because if you guys don't know, our kids, they, they have two homes. So Lily has her dad's and the boys have their mom's. And sometimes, depending on the time, they're over there instead of here. Most of the time, they're with us. And it's amazing. I thank God for that every single day. And I'm glad that we get to do that for them. We get to be there. We get to show them... Jesus, we get, to, we get to show them growing, not only as individuals, but as family, as together, as a husband and wife, how they should do things, how not to do things like we both made mistakes in the past and have done. We don't want our kids to do that. So anyways, Louie's home. Jessica's already up and ready. I get up, I start getting ready, and I go very like, as calmly as I can, go tell Lily, hey, can you get up and get dressed? I know it's silly early, <laughs> but Omi's in the hospital and we need to go see her. And this is where this moment, like God's been working this whole time, but this mo particular moment, I just, he's telling me, go read your Bible about forgiveness. So I, I pull out my Bible and I start looking up forgiveness. And I start reading some of these verses. And as I'm doing that, God gives me this vision that behind me, Jessica and Lily, as we walk into the hospital to go see Omi, that there is, that all you can see is, is angels, God, like God walking in with us and all of his angels, his whole army walking in to the hospital with us. And I, ah, man, God is so amazing. It's so amazing because when we did walk into that hospital, that's exactly what happened. The very first thing that came out of Omi's mouth, I have loved you and I missed you and I forgive you. Do you forgive me? And I said, Omi, I forgave you a long time ago because I know that wasn't you. And she goes, it wasn't me, but this is me. And it was only it was the only that I have always known, the only that took me to Germany for three weeks. <laughs> Man, it's incredible. It's so incredible. Took me to Germany as a graduation gift for three weeks and I had it was so much fun. I didn't want to come back to America. <laughs> I wanted to stay there. <laughs> I'm glad that I did come back. <laughs> I'm glad I did. I'm glad she didn't <laughs> be like, no, you can stay. <laughs> but that was Omi. That was the real Omi. That wasn't her dementia. That wasn't her sickness. That wasn't anything. And so right away, we, we did our best to try and get the boys to be able to come and come see her. Come spend time with her. She asked, I can't even tell you how many times. And we were under the impression that they were going to get to come. And that was awesome. That was so awesome. And so as the day progressed, Omi, she she started getting, uh, like her belly started filling up. Well, we had found out after she had passed that she had an aneurysm in her abdomen. And it, it happened to be like her right main artery I don't know I don't know I don't know the human anatomy anyhow like it started ballooning and then it finally it popped and so she was just bleeding internally and that's why they gave her hours to days and man this this woman this lady she is a fighter she was such a fighter Hear the boys coming? I'm like, I don't know, we're trying. We're trying our best. We really are. All we can do is try. So we had, I had a conversation with their, and it just, 
I tried. I tried. I tried. I tried. It didn't work out. So eventually, uh, Omi got moved from the hospital. It was only like a couple hours, maybe, of being at the hospital to a to like a hot to hospice, which is is more of just a building where they take you when they know that like you're you're on your deathbed and they want to make you more comfortable so that's exactly what they did they took her there and we were the only ones there it was awesome we had the place to ourselves. it was so it was so much fun it was, it really was it was there was so much laughter so much joy even in the hospital she was cracking the er uh, doctors and staff they're cracking them all up the nurses the ems guys that came in to move her she's like hey fluff my pillow so he's like fluffs her pillow kind of like that and then she goes no 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 take that pillow out and shake that thing <laughs> and so he did and then when they dropped them dropped her off at hospice that guy says oh watch out she'll tell you how to fluff a pillow so you can show your wife or husband <laughs> Like, it's so funny. That that was Omi. Like, she was just having fun. And, oh, man, it was, what a journey. So we get her into her room and everything at hospice. And we're still trying to get the boys there. Jessica reaches out to the boys. It just goes sideways. It, it sucks. It really does. However... Both of us had just decided like we had we had a great time with Omi. We knew that she wanted the boys there, we wanted the boys there. And the the greatest part is is along the journey Omi she knew, but I just I didn't have the heart to tell her that the boys weren't going to make it, that they weren't going to be able to be there. And that that is what hurt me the most is that my kids couldn't be there. All of my kids couldn't be there in somebody's last moments where they're filled with so much joy and so much love and they're just pouring out forgiveness and love. It just, it hurt. It still hurts. Man, I, it's not how this vlog supposed to go, guys. <laughs> it's supposed to be happy. <laughs> and so... Omi though, she, uh, she, after lunch, she started, she had some food and, you know, like, after lunch, she started, <laughs> for that semi to go by, <laughs> so she started, uh, this is where she started going downhill, she started falling asleep and then she wake up. And the first time that she kind of dozed off, she just very softly, and I, I mean, I'm, we're sitting there holding her hands, like loving on her, telling her, oh, me, it's okay to go to heaven. Jesus is waiting right there for you, and if you see him, go, run, fast as you can, go. <laughs> because I know when I'm there in that spot, that that's where I want to go. I want to go to Jesus. I want to go home. And I, I pray that everybody gets to be there with me and encounter that and encounter Jesus and encounter God in that way because it's incredible. It truly is. I wouldn't pass it up for the world to be with anybody in their last moments again. It's hard, but I, I, I want to be there for them. It's, a, it's just, I don't, even, I don't even have words for it. And so, she goes, I see the door, I see the light, mom, but I don't want to go. Omi seen her mother, and there's a whole other story about Omi that maybe someday I'll tell. This isn't her mom, her birth mom, this is the mom that she knew from birth that took care of her. And I love that. It's such an incredible story. Because without without her, without that, we wouldn't have been here. We wouldn't be here right now. God is so good that He plans these things, these 
oh man it just it works out in his timing may his will be done on earth as it is in heaven <laughs> so I told her I said only no 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 it's okay don't be afraid don't be afraid of that light run into the light go to God go go be home and she woke up and she started talking to us again <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, Trevor and Jessica, now you guys, you guys take care of your five kids. And Jessica and I just look at each other and smile and I said, Omi, you're going to meet that fifth kid before I get to meet him. You're going to get to take care of him before I ever get to see him. You get to do that. He's in heaven waiting for you and you get to take care of him. Hey, no, no, no. You're okay. <laughs> Our dogs there are so sweet. And so she goes, she just smiles and she says, yes, I already have. I've already met him. She started seeing people in heaven before she even left earth. Before she went to heaven. She was just waiting and I, I truly believe that she was waiting for the boys. And so it's about 5.30 or so and they, they get a call. They get a call us and we answer and I was just so overwhelmed with love and joy and, and thankfulness that they at least they got a call. And so we, we let him talk to, talk to Omi. At this point she had already been asleep. And then we, we hang up and they got to say, say their goodbyes essentially. And, uh, but, but before that had happened, Omi, one last time before she had fell asleep for good, for her last rest, she, she, she was praying the Father's Prayer, Our Father in Heaven, hallowed be the name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in Heaven. She's praying this, whispering very softly, you can almost barely hear her. And then she says, what language? And I just, I just looked at her and I said, Omi, it doesn't matter what language. God it will understand. He will understand you. Because she knows German. She speaks German. She came from Germany at the age of 19 to America, not knowing English at all. But she came with my grandfather, who was in the army stationed over in Germany. And that is how our family... That's where my mom's side of the family has cut that came from, and that's incredible. It's awesome. It's amazing. And so, after that, that's when she fell asleep, and she laid laid rest right there, like she just slept until <laughs> we had dinner, and after dinner, uh, Louie and the other kids they went with papa and went to their house and hung out and they were there for a few hours and then jessica and i were like okay you know what mom needs to go home and how about we go home let's let the dogs in put them in their kennel because they don't stay outside all night they got a kennel in the garage and as soon as we let the puppies out and put them in their kennel mom calls you need to get here it's time so we, we put the dogs up, we rushed back, didn't even get a change of clothes like we were going to. And we make it in there. And I've got a picture to show on here, okay? So you guys are gonna see a picture just kinda pop up and take over the screen. And this picture, like, I don't, something about it before entering hospice house again, I had to take that picture. And it, I had to, like, it was just so incredible. It, it meant so much. It, I don't know, <laughs> I didn't know why. And so I take it, and we go in there, and I mean, we get to spend the last minute or two, I don't even think it was that long, with Omi, with my mom, there. And the nurse comes in and is listening to her breathing so that they can write down the time of death and all of that, you know, that's stuff you gotta do. And so, 
uh, and we're all there and I'm just praying I'm just praying like thank you God thank you so grateful so thankful for everything for her life for all the joy she brought for all the life that she brought into the world it truly is incredible I, <laughs> when nobody when nobody seemed to believe in you she believed in you she pushed you she helped you when nobody else would, she was there. She was there to help. When you couldn't count on anybody, you could count on her. <laughs> and she would put you in your place. If she knew, she knew. She's like, don't do that. I'm telling you, don't do that. And then you go and do it anyways. And she's like, I told you so. <laughs> and for it to all to come down to this, I, all I can do is pray and thank God for all the all the memories, all the time that we got to spend with her. Whether it was in in sickness or in health, it was it was good, it was great, and I'm glad that we all had that. We all we all got to say goodbye. And and her last wishes were were so 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 good, so easy, and that's how I want my passing to be too. Like. When, when it's my time, I don't want it to be sadness. I don't. I want it to be joy. I want you all to be having fun and to soak it up in the memories and the love, the joy. I want God's love to just overwhelm everybody. The peace that it brings. It, it, man. And so anyhow, the nurse was like, okay, she's gone. And of course, like, tears come in, and, and then an incredible moment happens. <laughs> Omi wanted her hair done. She got her hair done. She wanted her nails painted, and so her toes were painted. And the only thing left to paint were her fingernails. And Lily steps in and goes, I'll do that. I want to do that. And she does, and it was... It was <sighs> it's incredible. And I, I really wish, I really wish that the boys could have been there that day to witness it, to witness the day, because it wasn't Omi being sick, it was Omi being herself, being Omi, the one who everybody knew and loved. And I just, oh man, I had, I struggled with it so much, so much that week. After she passed, I just struggled with it. Like, why couldn't the kids be there? Why couldn't they get to enjoy that and be with her? And you know, I thought Matthew 7, 12 is essentially treat others how you want to be treated. And so our family, what we have added, and I know it's not even in there, but is regardless of how they treat you. So regardless of how somebody treats you, you treat them the way that you would like to be treated. Because it says, uh, I should just go get my Bible and read it. Let me go, let me go grab it real quick. All right, here we go. So you guys can get the same Bible if you like. It is in my description below. I totally just hit the GoPro on the camera, on the door. Let's go to Matthew 12, 7, right? I said Matthew 7. Oh, here's the Father's Prayer real quick, which is in Matthew... Six nine. It says, "Pray then like this: Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors, debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil." And that's what Omi was praying before she finally had had passed matthew is man I, I love matthew this is such a good good book a good testimony and, and so then we go to matthew 7 12 and it says the golden rule oh you guys might not be able to read that it says the golden rule so whatever you wish that others would do to you do also to them for this is the law and the prophets and so if we go down here 
And it says, 7.12, do also to them, known as the golden rule, this verse summarizes the teaching of the law and the prophets. See Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and a note on Matthew 5.17. And so, that's it. You treat others how you want to be treated. Now, when somebody smacks you, you could smack them back. But that's showing others that you want to be smacked and that's how you want to be treated. You could be smacked and you could do what Jesus says, turn the other cheek and not do anything about it. You could simply just say, I forgive you. And that is what Jessica and I did that day. We, we, just, we just said, hey, we forgive you and left it at that. That's it. That's all. That's all that, that's the best thing that we can do because vengeance isn't ours. Revenge isn't ours. God is going to be just to each of us. He's, Jesus is going to be the judge one day whether he says, well, I, well done my faithful servant or I don't know you. That's it. That's it. That's all there is. Like, I'm not sure where it is in the Bible, but I know it's in here. And I know it's in much better words. <laughs> I just put it in simple Trevor language. <laughs> English. <laughs> and so, at the end of the day, it, in the end of the week, in the end of it all, it really hurt me that the boys couldn't be there. However, I forgave I forgave the one who was keeping them from coming. And I know that there's so much more to it. And we've already talked to the kids about it, and they did want to go. They did want to be there. And that's okay. Because I still, still, even today, I forgive them for for that. That's not that's not the boys' fault. It's not our fault. It's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but I forgive them. Because I don't want to be treated that way. And that's not how I'm going to treat others. So whenever the day comes that somebody else passes away, and somebody would like the kids there, like us there, I'm not going to deny them. I'm not going to say no. I'm just going to find out, hey, yeah, we'll be there. I don't care if we're, I don't care if we're on vacation in Florida, or in Hawaii, or Alaska, or Europe. It might take us a couple days to get here, but we'll get here and we'll be there. And if they pass in the meantime, I completely understand. But there's a difference in trying than flat out rejecting. So I will treat people how I want to be treated. And this is the part that our family has added, regardless of how others treat us. Because it's not an eye for an eye. It's an eye for a turn the cheek. <laughs> yeah, just turn the cheek. That's <laughs> what you gotta do. Somebody does you wrong, you just turn the cheek and let, let God handle it. God will handle it and He will take care of it. And He'll take care of you. And that was the hardest part about Oni's passing. It wasn't even that watching her go into heaven. That was so incredible. Watching her on the journey to heaven, on the on the way there, it was incredible. Watching her leave, and this picture that I shared a little bit earlier, I'm gonna pop it up again because I want you guys to comment below what you see right now, real quick. Do it real quick. I'll give you a minute here. Charlie's playing with her ball over there. Now, there's two things that I have seen now. The first thing is that I seen a cross with the with the way that the light was off the moon and the clouds. That was the first thing that I saw was a cross. I was like, that's incredible. Like knowing that Omi was passing and I see that right before she passes. So I, I posted this picture on Facebook, on my personal Facebook, and I put a little bit about Omi and her passing and then my mom she seen it but when she looked at the picture she seen Omi as an angel bowing with wings ascending into heaven 
right before she passed. And I looked at it and I was like, oh my goodness, you're right. That that looks like Omi. Now let me take you back a, oh, like that Sunday. Just kind of were driving to church, right? And uh, <laughs> and so just waving at officer going by. And so we, man, we as we uh, as we're going to church, we both see in the clouds what looks like a, a lady kneeling down. And so the lady is kneeling down in the clouds. And we both thought, wow, that's beautiful. That is amazing. And, and looking back, I believe that that was Omi in the clouds, bowing, bowing down, praying to God. Because of what was to come, which was her passing. I, that's so mind-blowing. So incredible. So anyways, God, God is so good. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. He will forever be. I am a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ. I'm not tied to religion. I'm not tied to religious beliefs. I'm simply a follower of Jesus. Jesus was sent by God so that he could pay for our price so that anybody who believes in him. Alright, here we go. John chapter 3 of verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Have eternal life through Jesus because Jesus is the only way to heaven he's the only way he's the one the 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 one the truth the way he that he's the life Jesus he's the only perfect one who ever lived he's the way to heaven so I like the disciples I follow Jesus he guides me he's my he's my best friend I pray to him daily, throughout the day, all day. <laughs> Good days, bad days. Days where I struggle. But here's the thing. Some people will only... <laughs> Some people will only ever know me as the old me and that old me has passed they, he is dead he is no longer here because I was reborn in Christ through being baptized and believing in Jesus and asking him to show me the way right Cohen uh. baptism uh. the old us the old us die and a new us is born in Christ oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we all of us have been baptized we all are fully devoted followers of Jesus we all love God He, Jesus is our Lord and Savior and if you guys today watching this if you want to be saved and you want to start being a fully devoted follower of Jesus drop a comment down below it, all, all you have to do is Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's it. Ask it. Say, God, come into my heart. Come cleanse my heart. Cleanse, cleanse me of everything. And fill all the voids with you, God. With your love, with your mercy, with your forgiveness, with your wisdom, your strength. God is so good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, God. I guess with that, we'll go ahead and end the vlog now. If ever, real quick, I forgive you. And I know, I get it. It's hard. It's hard to know, am I doing the right thing or am I not? 
put it in God's hands. Ask Him to show you. Pray. Allow Him into your heart. Into all the closed doors that you've shut. Allow Him into them to heal them. So that you may be healed. So that you may be become better. I do this all the time. I want to become better in every situation. I want to become more like Jesus in every situation. That's good right there. That's real good. God, thank you. Thank you for everybody watching this. Thank you for everyone everywhere, God. I thank you for all of the good, all of the bad. I thank you for being our provider for everything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for Jesus. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for paying the ultimate price for all of us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God, you are welcome here. Jesus, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. May those watching feel your spirit overwhelm them with your love, your forgiveness, your mercy, your kindness, your joy. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great day. God bless y'all. We love y'all. And thank you for sticking around through this very tough, tough, tough video. I've been wanting to do it for a while and I just, I've been struggling. So here it is. The tr raw truth. And nothing, nothing else. Thank you. I love y'all. We'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day and God bless. Okay, all of you and my family, my American family, it's been a long journey, and time is not on my side, but I always loved you guys, no matter what. We didn't always have fights and all that kind of stuff, but I think we always loved each other, no matter what. I love all of your kids. I love my whole family. And in so many ways, I wish it wouldn't have to be the way it is today. What I know is be good to each other, take care of each other, be honest with each other, and always, always love each other. That's the most important. Take care of each other, and I love you forever. Whenever we see each other again, hopefully someday, Take care, all of you. I love you bunches. That's all Omi has to say. <laughs> love you too, Omi. Love you.